In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to check for errors that might be in your data that would prevent students from feeding into Dragonfly appropriately for your athletic eligibility. So the first misnomer that I want to state is that districts do not do any integration in with Dragonfly. The state sends Dragonfly files on a nightly basis. So as long as your data is correct in PowerSchool on the student, it will feed to the State Department and the state sends that data to Dragonfly. But let's make sure that we have the correct data in on a student and what, where errors can occur that could prevent either a connection from not happening or the transcript from not accurately reflecting what it should. So first is how do you trigger a student to be in the file that is sent? And that is all based on that athlete checkbox. The athlete checkbox, if I look up a student, so I'm going to pull up um, Donald Duck here. And on the state province page, you will see this checkbox for athlete. If Donald needs to be marked as an athlete so his file can send to Dragonfly, that box does have to be checked. Now, one thing that we do see quite often is that people will come in here, check the box, and then they will forget to scroll down and click the Submit button. Oh, and in this case, we have a field that was not filled out, so we have to fill it out. Now, I'm going to double check. That is still checked, and I hit Submit. That is the appropriate area where you check to include them in the athlete file going to Dragonfly. So if that still does not solve your problem and you have other errors that are not having that transcript connect, here are other areas you can check. One is the enrollment record. The enrollment record is found under the transfer info screen of the student. There are a couple of things that you need to check here. One, does the student have a valid entry code? In this case, the E entry code is your valid enrollment code. We only have that one true enrollment code. If the student is in a provisional enrollment status, the file will not be sent. So you have to make sure you have that E and that you don't have a blank entry code right there because that will happen when students are not marked appropriately in the end of your process. Another thing to watch is your entry and exit dates to make sure that the, you are in a valid enrollment period. Sometimes we have issues with overlapping enrollments. For example, if a student withdrew from a school prior to coming to your school and you saw an overlap, such as an 8-9-22 date to the end of school here, but down here you might see an 8-9-22 to a 7-6 because they withdrew in July from the other school and came to you, but the school didn't come back and appropriately re-enter the entry code. So check to make sure that you don't have any overlaps between your previous and current enrollment and that your current enrollment dates are legitimate dates for the current school year. So once you've identified that the student's athlete checkbox is checked, that you have an entry code of E and you have appropriate entry and exit dates, if you still are running into issues with grades, the next thing you would want to check is the student's actual historical grades page. If we navigate to the historical grades page, remember this is what we ultimately refer to as the transcript and making sure that the right items go over there. So what you want to check is a couple of things right here. Number one, are all of your courses actually aligned to a state course number? So you would see here, here are all of my grades for last year, the 21-22 year, which would be making him um, eligible for this upcoming year. They all do have a true and identified state course number. If any of these courses do not have a course number, you will need to go into the file and associate the correct course number with it. There are times when students transfer across the state where the course number will not come over if it's a course number that's been shredded out and is different from the course number you are using in your local district. The other item that you want to check is what bucket are the final grades in. Remember in Alabama, we're using our final credit bearing grades. And even if it's middle school, not credit bearing, those final course averages are our F1, F2 buckets. So make sure that they're in the correct buckets. The next thing you want to make sure is that you have an identified grade and percentage both filled out on this grade store code right here. So if I look at F1, I will notice that both the grade and the percent is filled out. 
we have seen quite often in the past where a student will have a grade value but have a blank percent value which will actually send to Dragonfly as a zero which will make them ineligible off of those grades. So making sure that your grade, your percent, the bucket, and the course number are all there will help to identify that you don't have any issues with your grades that you are being sent to Dragonfly. Now, if you say that, yes, we have marked our students as athletes, are you sure they have been marked as athletes? If I want to get an entire list, here's how you can pull your list either at a district level or at a school level of every student who has been marked an athlete. From this search, I'm going to do view field list and I'm going to type in athlete. Now notice I get a lot of these athletics activities over here. That is not where you mark as an athlete for Dragonfly purposes. That would be for using some internal activities markings inside a power school that has nothing to do with state fields. This SALSTU Custom X Athlete TF that is the actual state identified athletics field that is the checkbox that you send to Dragonfly. If you will click on that field name and choose equals one and hit enter, it will bring up all of the students that you have marked with that checkbox. So you can double check and identify that you actually have the students marked that you think you have marked and identified as an athlete in power school. Hope this helps you troubleshooting to see if you have any issues with your eligibility requirements for students inside of PowerSchool.